Hey everyone, welcome back to a special edition episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast, San Diego Comic Con 2019. Larry here. And Anthony here. What is going on, Ant? Uh, you know, uh, the usual, except not really. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, you're uh, fresh off the rails. Uh, I'm off the rails, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, because the last, the last time we had a show, um, it was before I went to China. So we're talking a couple oh, of yeah, weeks. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so um, I have been to China and back. I Good. have been to San Diego and back. Um, <laughs> and at some point, I managed to get back on my time zone. I don't know how I did it, but I did. Well, that's good. I mean, will San Diego have a different time zone? I don't think so, right? No, 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 San Diego doesn't have a different time zone. But I barely had a chance to recover from China oh, before I had, I had my guest come out to come to San yeah. Diego with me. So, how long, well, first of all, how long were you home before you headed to San Diego? Um, four days. All right, uh, not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, no, I mean it, it could have, it definitely could have been a lot worse. But uh, the good <laughs> news is, you know, I, I survived it. Uh, yeah. I, I I also survived Comic Con, which was great. Uh, Thank you. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to take a break from the norm because yes, we finally have firsthand account. You know, San Diego Comic Con. I don't know what thirty years or something like that. No, maybe 50. longer. Yeah, 50. you know, this I was the fiftieth anniversary. I thought I heard fifty, but I'm like, no, they couldn't have had Comic Cons fifty years ago. It wasn't even invented till the nineties. Yeah, but, no, um, fifty years ago, I think it was called. It was like called Mini Con or something like that, and they only had like a handful. Of, like it was a very very small thing. Um, yeah, they only had a handful of things going on, and then over the years, it grew and grew and grew, and now it has uh, it has grown to the point where it's its own monster, and they need to uh, they need to start reining in it, in my opinion. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> Yes, uh, I can't wait to talk about that part of it. But first, let's talk about after all these years, it's no secret. And, you know, between the two of us, you're the big comic book guy. I'm not into comic books. I mean, I respect them. I understand them. I like the movies, but you're into comics. Yes. And the person that you brought with you is probably the only other person on the planet you can possibly bring to a convention like this who will lose his mind as he probably did. And we're talking about our buddy, uh, Frankie. Yeah. Frank. Yeah. So Frankie flew out from uh, New Jersey to join me for Comic-Con. And yes, yep. um, if there's anybody who's a bigger fan of comics uh, than me, it's gotta be him. <laughs> I mean, he's like, like we're, we're, we're on our way there and he's taught, like he's literally throwing names out at me. He's like, Oh my God. He's like, I can't wait. I want to get this. And I, I'm going to get this from this guy. I'm going to get this from this guy. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, I don't know any of these people. Who are these people? He's like, he's like, these are the artists and everything like that. I was like, yeah, I was like, I can name, I can give you, I can give you um, actors in movies. I can give you directors. That part I got down. I, when it comes to comic books, sadly, except for the really well-known yeah. artists, I don't, I really don't know the name. So like he, and he knew exactly where he wanted to go. So he was like, all right, I'm going to go get a commission from this guy and this girl and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, I was very happy he had a plan, which was Oh, great. yeah. So he's, um, he's yeah. very meticulous like that because, yeah. you know, out here in New York, we would go to New York Comic Con. And, yeah, he's just like, first of all, you only see him for about 27 seconds once you're inside the convention hall. Because then, like a child, he just takes off without yeah. telling you where he's going. <laughs> well, I did warn him before we walked in there. I was like, "Do I need to get you a leash? I'll get a child leash for you." And <laughs> no, and he's like, you know what? And he's like, no. He's like, don't worry. He's like, I won't, I won't, I won't run off. And I'll be honest with you. No, I mean, um, he was he was very well behaved. Thank you, Frankie, for being well behaved. No, I mean, he was he was really cool. Um, he hung around for a while. I mean, at some points or at most points, we split off because. He wanted to do his thing. I wanted to do mine. Okay. So, and it was perfectly fine. I mean, the place is huge. There's no yeah. way to cover everything um, together, or it would take too long. So, so a lot of times we split off. He definitely, he definitely walked the floor way more than I did. Even though, like, uh, the first day we were there, uh, oh gosh, I don't know. We were there for like seven hours. Um, oh wow! Yeah, you yeah. were. Yeah, when you texted me later yeah. on in the day, I was like, "You guys are still there. You're still there." Yeah, no, uh, and trust me, no, they were like, I'm not kidding you. Like, uh, let, let let's just get into it really quick. Right. Okay, somewhere between 160 to 170 thousand people crammed into a convention center for four days. Okay, <laughs> just imagine, just imagine that. Now, granted, 
the, uh, the San Diego Convention Center, I've never seen a bigger convention center in my life. Oh, it this is place is really beyond good. massive. Beyond massive. Um, and uh, But still, you're talking about 170,000 people basically within a three-block radius. Oh, wow. You know? Because you're talking about the convention center and then the gas, li- gas lamp quarter nearby, which is where like, okay. the restaurants were and everything like that. And then there are the outdoor, uh, there are the outdoor events that are set up, too. Okay. So, um, so there's tons to do. There are tons of panels. Like, I'm not kidding you. I, I, I wish I brought – I wish I had my book nearby. I don't want to run and go get it. But I'm not kidding you. The event book, just events going on at Comic-Con, was about this thick. Wow. I mean, and we're talking newspaper print with little paragraphs of everything going on. There were easily 50 to 60 things going on every half an hour. Multiple so, panels, I'm sure. Panels, events, th- just all kinds of things going on. There was, um, there was an event I tried to get into, but that's a whole other story about why I didn't get into it. <laughs> um, but um, they, um, they were doing board games in rooms. Oh, really? So, Oh, wow. Yeah, they were doing board games. So, and they were uh, they were playing a game I didn't even know existed, uh, and it was done by Steve Jackson, the guy who did uh, Munchkin, which is an awesome game. Okay, awesome board game. But it uh, they did a Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure board game, and I wanted oh. to play it. <laughs> That's and I cool. wanted to play it. I was like, that sounds awesome. I want to go play it. But um, the 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 game started at nine a.m. The con didn't open until 9.30, and security didn't know what the hell they were doing. So <laughs> when I went over to go to the, to, the, to the room that it was in, the convention room that it was in, they're like, oh, only professionals are allowed through here. And I'm like, well, there's an event starting at 9 a.m. I want to go to. Here it is in the program, and it's right there. I ju- I, that's why I need to go through. Yeah. No, 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 you got to go around the other way. And then I go around the other way, and there's no way to get there. So I go down there, and I'm like, well... I want to get to this. Like, oh no, you got to go upstairs through there. I was like, <laughs> she sent me down here. Oh boy. Needless to say, I didn't get it. I didn't no. get it. <laughs> which was which was fine. Um, there were there were plenty of other things to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, um, I know we're we're video gamers. We want to talk gaming. Right. Um, my first stop when I go to a convention, I go comics. That's where I go. Um, so. Which is kind of traditional, considering the fact that Comic Con has pretty much become synonymous with television and film. That yeah. you know, I mean, I'm sure anybody who's been paying attention, all the major studios made announcements. Marvel announced their whole Phase Four lineup. Oh, God. You, yeah, yeah. You got uh, you got every you know you got updates on what's going on on television. Every 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 other studio weighing in on on stuff. So um, th- there's an unbelievable amount of information that's getting channeled through this place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for me. Um, you know, I'm a big comic book collector. I've been doing it since I was a kid. I have a ton of comics. I wanted to go comic shopping, so I did. Um, and the problem now, the problem with comic shopping at a convention is that uh, a lot of vendors tend to mark it up. Oh God, yes. Because they know you're at they know you're at the convention, um, and you just you're just getting involved in you know it's the heat of the moment type of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you're impulse buying. You're there. It's in front of you. You want it. You buy it. Um, so, you know, I was going through, you know, so I walked through all of the vendors, checked out some stuff. I managed to find a few good deals, which made me very happy. And again, I'm not looking for, uh, you know, when I go comic shopping, I'm pretty much, I'm trying to, I'm almost like retro comic shopping. So Okay. You got uh, your list I'll, with you for trying to collect, trying to get I that my, collection yeah, going? I have my app, my app with me, CLZ Comics. And uh, basically filling in back issues for my favorite uh, runs. Okay. So that's what I did. I, I, I bought a bunch of comics to fill in. I got a couple of key issues. I got the, I got the uh, Death of Jean Grey and the Dark Phoenix Saga. Oh, wow. Which was really cool. I got okay. A, yeah. So I, I got a handful of stuff at what I thought was a decent price. So I walked out happy on the comic end. Good, good. Uh, which, which was good. Um, and then, you know, and then after that, it's like, it's really like, you know, depending on what you want to do, I, I'm, I wasn't interested again, this was my first con. I wasn't okay. interested in going to the panels per se, because the lines for the panels start the minute the doors open. Oh, so it, doesn't about matter, it. it doesn't matter what time the panel's at. So you are probably the only person I know that's been now to both San Diego and New York Comic Con. Now I get New York Comic Con physically is smaller, though it's starting to become as important and as popular as San Diego. Mm-hmm. But as far as that lineup where you're herded outside, then you're herded inside, and then the doors open, then you're herded one more time to another section before yep. you're allowed loose on the floor. Is that the same thing in San Diego as it's like in New York? 
Well, yeah, kind of similar. Um, they had a couple of things going on. First, uh, in the beginning, it seemed very organized in the beginning when we first got there because they let you inside before open to go up to the second level if you mm. needed to get your badge. And they gave you your bag and your books, the souvenir stuff, right? Okay. You were able to get that right away. If you wanted to get into the convention first, there was a line on that second floor that you could stand in, and they would let those people into the convention hall first. Okay. Fine. No problem. In terms of outside, there are numerous doors, and they're labeled like A, they're like section A or entrance A all the way down to, I think, G or H. Mm -hmm. And within each section, there are like, I don't know, six or eight doors. And they're and they're very clearly marked enter exit straightforward right one you know entrance a was for people with disabilities and stuff like that like everything seemed really cool so on thursday frankie and i get there we line up at like i don't know nine o'clock and we're lining up and we line up at f at a door by f okay. and uh the line was short because there were so many doors right and then all of a sudden, like, you know, so we're, we're sitting there and we're waiting and 930 is when the doors open. Right. Mm -hmm. So 930 uh, and before 930, somebody went to talk to security. Security's like, yeah, we're going to open the doors in five minutes. Great. So 930 hits. Doors don't open. So, everybody, mm -hmm. you know, of course, the people that are in the front of the line are like, why are the doors opening? <laughs> nerds start yeah, reacting. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and you don't you don't want to you don't want a hundred thousand nerds like <laughs> bum rushing glass <laughs> doors because the no. glass is going to lose <laughs> because so. Frankie's going to barrel through it like a juggernaut. <laughs> Just get it. <laughs> no, Frankie was very well behaved. But so th then here's what happened. So. 9.30 hits, nothing happens. 9.35, doors still aren't open. And we're like, okay, oh what the hell's going on? Then all of a sudden, a security guard comes out the comes out of the door and says, everybody has to go to, to, um, to section E. Everybody has to enter through section E only. So now they're saying everybody has to go through one set of doors. Oh, boy. Yep. That sounds familiar. Yeah. One set of double doors. And of course, yep. everybody's like, what the? And they're telling everybody all across the way from yeah. like B all the way down to H. Uh oh, so literally everybody. Everybody's I mean, standing. No, no. Okay. Everybody's standing outside has oh. to go to one set of doors in section E. So you know, what, ha what happens when they announce that? Oh, everyone starts bum rushing. It's not yeah. like, oh, did everyone keep your spot in line? No. No, no, no. no. Nerd convergence. <laughs> <laughs> all together so now you've got a mass like i swear to god like we could have formed like into the blob you know from the blob movie like we literally could have been like big giant nerd blob or a nerd version like a nerd nerd version of voltron just oh, yes you know? nerdtron i feel like that was in a cartoon somewhere in my uh oh family. probably family guy family guy did it family guy did it with all, everyone yeah. in, in the wheelchairs <laughs> so anyway, so like, so everybody bum rushes, and now you're all squished together, and nobody's moving, right? Okay. And everybody's like, "This is the most ridiculous thing ever." There are easily fifty doors you can walk in, or something like that, and they're only putting everybody through two. Yeah, that you know that reminds me when I was in Detroit for WrestleMania, WrestleMania 23. Literally, it was eighty thousand people through two doors. It was yeah. there were only two doors open. It was ridiculous. yeah, which which is absurd. Okay, so then everybody converges. Right. And now now we've all lost our places in lines at the doors we were at. So we all converge to go to E. OK. Two minutes later, they open all of the doors. Ah, you go. That's how that works. Yeah. So then all of a sudden, mad dashes all over the place. Everybody running. I lo That was the first time I lost Frankie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, all, but it was only for the wall. <laughs> it was only it was only for 30 seconds. He was waiting okay. for me on the inside. It was fine. So oh, then, you yeah. So that yeah no no so that was that was the first time. Um, also, I met up with uh, one of my coworkers there as well because he was there. He was there for the con, so we we met up. He brought me over to a cool um, vendor who had comic books for a discount. Um, but anyway, so the comic flow was great. Get through Artist Alley. Artist Alley is a zoo. Tons oh. of people over there. Um, but you know, I mean, awesome artwork, and I'll and I'll I'll share a little bit of that uh, with you uh, right. in a minute. So. Because I bought the uh, I bought the art stuff on day two, bought the comics on day one. Um, so and actually, you know what? I'll share the art now because then we're going to get into the gaming stuff and then I'll start. Okay. That. So anyway, so um, so I picked up a few, uh, just a few things. There were, uh, and it was only one spot um, that I grabbed stuff at. 
Uh, this guy was selling prints. His name is Greg Horn. Really, really talented artist. He was also signing everything that um, that he said that. Uh, so that let he me bought. before you show. Before yeah. you show, let me ask you a question. Are you? Because I'm like this, where like you'll have the artists there. They'll mm -hmm. have their drawings, but a lot of them are just prints. You know, like yes. repros, which is fine. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Totally fine. But if you have a choice of a repro versus the exact same thing, but the original art. You're gonna go for the original art. I would go for the original art if I could pay if I could afford well, it. But I'll be honest with you, I'm, yeah. I mean, the prices are pretty high. Yeah. So, um, so in most cases, I wind up buying. But at least you got signatures. Yeah, but they're all signed, which is cool. That's cool. Um, and I was happy with it. So, yeah. um, so, so anyway, so I got a couple. I got a few good ones. One of them I actually bought for Frankie. He didn't take home with him. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to. I'll have to send that home. But uh, I got this really cool Spider-Man in get black it. costume. Oh, Which that's is, cool. Yeah, this is really sweet. That's nice. So, yeah, really nice. And you can see Greg Horn signed yeah. right there on the bottom. Yeah. So that was really cool. Uh, for Frankie, um, I got him a really awesome looking Spider-Gwen. Oh, very cool. And, you know, I just finally watched yeah. for the first time Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. So now the oh. whole Spider-Gwen thing makes sense to me. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is really awesome. Okay, so so this one, um, this one I, I actually got for you. Oh, um, and I, I'm hoping you like it, but I got this really <laughs> awesome Sub Zero. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, that's so, fantastic. I love Sub Zero. He's my he's my yeah. So uh, he's my go to. So next time I see you, uh, this is coming your way. Awesome, thank you. That's very cool. Yeah, and then the other one that I got for myself, the video game one I got. Well, this is a, this is a hybrid of two of my favorite nerd things of all time. Okay, okay? so. It's Link and oh, wow. Gollum and oh, Link wow. holding the one ring. Oh, that is awesome. That is an amazing mashup. Uh, yeah, yep. this is a great mashup. And if you you know, you Yeah. Link's got the one ring in his hand. Is, Gollum is yeah. Gollum is like right over his shoulder. Yep. Yeah, this I thought was really sweet. That is, so. that is very cool. That's yeah. a good goodbye. Yeah, so that that was Greg Horn. Um, really, really good stuff. And then um, the other things that I got were more uh, were a little bit more video game related. So um, so I'll get to those in uh, I'll get to those in a minute um, because it, well, some of them are related to uh, to what I um, what happened while I was there. Uh, one of the things I got, and I actually I also got this guy for you because I thought he was really cool. I just can't get his legs on. So there's this company that does this thing called Squibs. Ooh, uh, that? Oh, what? Yeah. Okay. So they do, these, they do these little things called – it's called squibs. Oh, wait a minute. I think you sent me the picture. Yeah, so I sent you a picture of it. So so it's basically they, – they take these things and they do them with arms and legs, right? Yes. So, so, um, so I thought you would like this one. So I can't get the legs on right now, but I grabbed you a Nintendo cartridge with boo. I like that, and it's clear. I and like that a lot. It's a clear cartridge, so I thought Perfect. that would be really fun. So Thank you. So I got I got you that. Um, I didn't get one for myself because, again, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. It's one of those things like when I walk around when I walk around the con, I'm like, I really like all of these things, and then I stop and I'm like, well, where am I going to put it all? And that keeps me. I know you you just you just buy it and worry about it later. I'm like me on the other hand, I stop for a moment, I think about it, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to get it because I have nowhere to put it. Let's move on. To be fair, I'm starting to think that way a little bit. Which is good. Uh, even though I did buy a couple pops that I don't know where I'm going to put them, but be yeah. that as it may. Oh, one of which is kind of related to San Diego Comic Con, which I'll talk about in a moment. Okay. So I'll so, talk about it now. Then. Oh, so I, about, I was going to say talk about it now because I'm going to get into I'm going to get into the video game portion. Yeah, uh, very briefly. Um, so uh, tons of, uh, uh, of course, all the the San Diego Comic Con, the Funko Pops are come out during San Diego and New York for that matter, mm -hmm. and it's pretty cool because what I really love to see is going online and seeing all the rich people and the celebrities and those who have pull showing off all the special edition pops that they cut the line for at yeah. the Funko booth. Yeah, that's I love it. Anyway. Since I can't go to San Diego and it's a hump to sometimes get these pops, I did find a website, which I'll give them a shout out, uh, Big Apple Collectibles. Mm -hmm. um, actually, a friend of ours, Jonathan, told me about. And they were selling San Diego Comic-Con pops. Oh, nice. uh, like, 
like for example, they had the Big Bang Theory set when they were all dressed up as the Justice League in that one episode. Oh, nice. Barry Sheldon was already gone and, and everything. But anyway, of course. I, I have it on the other side of the room, so I don't have it to show you, but I ordered the Kang and Kodos double pack, the aliens from The Simpsons. It glows in the dark. I think it was 30 bucks, maybe 40 bucks for it. Like two days later, it already tripled in price. Wow. Yeah. That's really- no, the thing about the thing about the conventions is the exclusives immediately go up in value after you buy them. Now, now I didn't pick up any exclusives because again, yeah, it's a whole I separate. Di- well, I didn't do research, and there's a whole separate line. I'm not kidding you. Funko had two booths on the opposite ends of the con just to handle that, and I'm not. And, and they had one of those lines that snaked, and Here's- it was crazy. I've done that at New. I don't remember if it was the one you were there for. I did it at New York Comic Con where. You and it's probably going to be the same this year. You enter a raffle before the Comic Con, mm-hmm. like you know, a month yeah. before, to possibly get a chance to win a ticket to get online to possibly buy a Funko Pop mm-hmm. while you're there. Uh, it's re- I mean, by the time I got there, when I did it, I, I got there early enough, so I had a good spot in line. But then you see people offline. Just. Trying to buy them from the people online, yeah. like I get this one, no, because you usually allow like one per person. Um, it's the 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 exclusives yeah. are ridiculous. It's not even worth it three quarters no. of the time. Sometimes, no, no, no. Most, but, it's, you know what? And it depends to your taste. Like in other words, yeah. like if you want to buy an exclusive for yourself, it's one thing. But I know for a fact a lot of the people are buying these exclusives to sell them for triple the price as soon as they leave. So it's it's garbage. But in any not, event, but anyway. I want, I want to ask you one more thing before you get to the video game part. Unless yeah. it... So you mentioned it. You may mention it, but I think it's a good in-between. Um, the crowd. So oh. so what was it like, especially compared to maybe New York Comic Con? Because I'm trying to get a feel of what San Diego Comic Con is like. And New York is crowded. You're doing one of these the entire time yep. through the Javits Center in New York. That's exactly what you're doing there. <laughs> except, except it's bigger and it's long. <laughs> so that is fantastic. and to give you a context i don't know how many aisles there are at um mm-hmm. new york comic-con but you know how they start 100 200 yes. 300 and everything this one went to 5700 wow i think new york probably gets to 3000 so that'd be like 30 yeah so it's so it's about double the size Oof. it's about double the size and not only that but like they run out in one direction and then the the walls going long ways are another Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, same thing. All right. So, yeah, so absolutely That's insane. Um, definitely, like, you know, th- there was an overabundance of stuff. Like, my, I mean, literally, my eyes were burning from all the information <laughs> I was taking in. Oh, uh, I, I do want to ask you one more thing that's not game related before we get to that section. You sent me a picture and they look beautiful. The Ghostbusters. Um, yes. Um, the, the, the Ghostbusters maquettes that they're making. Yep, they're not out I, yet. Oh. Uh, statues. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that the official term? Maquettes? Yes, they're called maquettes. Okay. They, I mean, they look gorgeous. Yeah. They, um, they also had a life-sized, um, a life-size Michael Myers head bust. Ooh. That looked so realistic. It was like it was like creepy realistic. <laughs> it was really good. That's cool. Um, yeah, it was cool. Uh, they also had a life-size alien there that was uh, creepy. Uh, <laughs> Even better, really, really good stuff. And you know, I can go on and on about all those things that I saw, but I want to get to I want to get to the games. Yeah, let's, let's get to the second half of this. Yeah. So, so with the gaming stuff, um, you know, I wasn't expecting to see a lot video game wise. I thought maybe I'd see a couple of things, but I was actually surprised with how much I did see. But that's also because a lot of the companies set up their booths, and it makes sense. You have everybody coming there for convention, the convention, um, and again. A lot of these people are gamers, so it only makes sense that you're going to have games. The cultures go hand in hand. Exactly. So it just made sense that you had gamers there. The first yeah. thing that, the, So the first thing that I ran across, which was kind of random, because I went to CGC. Okay. That was my first stop, because what, uh, CGC is a comic grading company, so, they grade, okay. your, so they, grade, they grade your comics and they seal them up for you and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I brought five comics with me to get graded. I dropped those off um, and immediately blew my budget just doing that. Uh, <laughs> It's expensive. That's yeah. up. So yeah, so got so got a bunch of stuff graded, then moved on. 
and I noticed right next to them is this is Heritage Auctions. Now Heritage au- oh, Auctions yeah. is yeah, you know who they are. Yeah, um, a lot of that. I know where you're going with this. Yeah, exactly. So Heritage Auctions is a company. They're literally an auction company, and they auction stuff. They auction comic books, video games, and stuff like that. So I'm looking in the case at all the really cool uh, comic books they have, like Amazing Fantasy 15, which is the first uh, issue of Spider-Man, and on it they would have like the estimate what the estimated value is or what they think it sells for and so like, that's what it was okay yeah that's not a exactly. starting bit no it's not a starting bit it's what, right. they, it's what it's what their estimated gotcha. value, sale value is and so like okay. amazing fantasy 15 had like eighty thousand dollars on Whew, it. x-men number one fifty thousand dollars so on and so forth because these suckers are expensive when they're in good condition fine inside the case just so happened to notice a handful of video games so and we're talking sealed, brand new, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at the prices, and I'm like, okay, these can't be right. I was like, absolutely yep. ridiculous. So, for example, and I'm trying to think of all the ones that I did see. I got them right. Oh, okay, yeah. You have them in front of you? I have the ones that you sent me, yeah. All right, cool. So, like, for example, Metal Gear Solid on PlayStation the PlayStation 1, sealed and graded at, like, a yeah. 9.8 or something like exactly. that. Exactly. It's a 9.8 graded sealed inbox well, in in CD yeah. case, Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, and the estimated value for it was like five thousand dollars. Four thousand. Four thousand. But still, but 4, still, dollars. that is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm like, I can't imagine paying four thousand dollars even for a sealed game. Uh, uh, and Larry, since you have the other images up, and I don't, why don't you run through them? <laughs> yeah. So, so you sent you sent four of them uh, that blew my mind. Uh, one of which, though, actually, which oh, I'll tell that in a minute. But let's do this. Uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Uh, sealed in box. Now, uh, just the way the photo is, I think it was a 7.5. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it sounds about right. Okay. All right. Uh, not even autographed by Tyson. Oh. And looking for probably going to sell for $2,000. I, I, I don't understand. I get it. It's because no, they had to re-release Punch Out. No, that part. But So yeah. it's a special. But it's that's nuts. Um, Donkey Kong Country 3. Uh, that was just re-released on the uh, Nintendo online service. Uh, inbox, I want to say a 9.4, it looks like. Uh, $5,000. Yep. So uh, Stanley uh, finally getting his money's worth Yeah, there. Donkey Kong 3, not Donkey Kong Country 3. No, no, did I say country? Yeah, you said country. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Donkey Kong 3, I apologize. No worries, no worries. Uh, um, and then the piece de resistance. Yeah. Was this even was this even the most expensive one there? Uh, no, actually, I'll, I'll tell you a couple more okay. before you get to that one. So there oh, was okay. a um, there was a Mario Brothers, the original Mario Brothers on NES, not okay. Super Mario. Yeah. Mario Brothers, um, and it I don't believe it, it was not sealed, but it had the box and everything like that. Yeah. Five point five grade, fifteen hundred. Wow. Yeah. Oh, um, I'm trying to remember which one I... Okay, and then there was um, z- uh, Zombie Nation. Hold on, hold on. 1500 For the I original can... Mario Brothers. I yeah. know. I'm just saying, 15 Yes, pricey, but I can almost be like, okay, in box, if everything's still inside of it, right. m- maybe 1500 All right, but like... If you want to. You know, I get that yeah. part. You know, green All right, move on. Uh, so Zombie Nation for NES, which is a hard game to find. Um, I, I know, you don't even know what it is. Um, and I can't see the grade on the picture I took, but it was going for $5,000. Wow, gosh, darn it. And then you go go for your piece de resistance. I'm, I'm investing in the wrong things here with the pops. You really are. So, and probably in my opinion, such a garbage game. But that's just me being me. I yeah. hate But Balloon Fight. Yes. And yes. Sealed. Uh, again, I want to say that was a nine point four. If I'm looking That's at a nine, it, it's like, a nine four grade. All right. Now, before I say what the price is on the sticker, I went to Game On this yep. the, over the weekend, and you know my friends over there, Game On, great people. We've talked about them before, and I put a lot of um, trust in what they feel the values go for. They're pretty spot on. No one's ever, there's never like an exact number because it's yeah. going to vary what it is in New York versus where you are in, in California. So the prices vary, but they're usually pretty spot on. So when I told them this balloon fight, nine, four sealed graded in box, how much they guessed. Well, Brian did guessed 
seven thousand dollars. Okay. I was like, all right, you know what? It, I'm actually shocked you even went that high. But the one that Anthony sent me, which made me go, this is ridiculous. Fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. For such a crappy game, in my opinion. I like Balloon Fight. All right. Well, in my opinion. Right. <laughs> and you know what? That wasn't the only one that was $15,000. Really? What other one? There was that? another one. There was a 9.5 graded Urban Champion for Ooh. NES okay. for $15,000. And well, that, that was... Yeah. It was, it was just crazy. It was like I, I couldn't believe it. Were there any Zeldas or Super Mario Brothers? Well, or... it's funny you should ask that because... There was another guy, another vendor that was there. Um, he was stealing uh, the, all these and repricing them. No, no, independent vendor. He was selling. He was selling comics and other stuff too. He had graded games as well. Now I didn't get the prices for them. They were not on them. But okay. he had uh, two Legend of Zelda's graded at seven point oh. Ooh. He had a Chrono Trigger at nine point four. Wow. Which made me really want it, but I wasn't going to even <laughs> ask. He had a Super Mario Brothers in box, and I think it was the one you bought. It wasn't okay. the one that came with the system, the one you gotcha. bought. Graded at a 9.0, and I also think it was sealed. Ooh. And then he also had uh, a Metroid for uh, graded at a 7.0. Okay. It's really interesting. So, um, so again... Um, grading for video games is now becoming a thing. So if you do, which I you, get, yeah, which which I get. I mean, people are doing it for comic books now. It only makes sense. So if you are a game collector out there and you have some really good games complete and they're rare or whatever, it may be worth you getting, you know, getting them graded because the grading itself ups the value. Oh, of course. So. Now, I mean, if you want to talk about rare, I don't know if it's going to be as rare as the one that I picked up here for you over the weekend i just got to hide a couple spots here because i don't want to be rude at the store i bought it from oh final <laughs> fantasy 7 on nes on uh, NES. yeah you know what as much as i want to keep it sealed i'm probably gonna i'm gonna open and play that sucker well this bad boy is is not uh factory sealed so okay. don't worry about that part. perfect i'm gonna open it up and play it for sure absolutely actually i'm telling you it's gorgeous it's a white cartridge it's like a pearl white cartridge I there's a poster in it cannot. that will go out this week but uh yeah so um so that was heritage auctions literally like the first thing i saw after i went to cgc which was okay uh, a couple of other little things I saw, like one other little thing I saw, which I thought was kind of cool, was um, when I ran across the Hallmark booth, because you know, oh yes, yes, Hallmark had a booth there. Um, they were showcasing, you know, they always showcase their Christmas ornaments for the year, mm -hmm. and they have four video game ornaments for this year. Uh, three of them are Mario related, and it's um, uh, you got uh, Mario standing on top of um, a pipe, yep. a warp pipe. You've got uh, Princess Peach with her umbrella, and then you've got a Bowser ornament. So those are all coming out this year. Also, the one that I found more interesting because I thought it was cool, they released an arcade cabinet of Defender. Yes. I guess that's the, a new series. That's probably the second in their series because last year was Donkey Kong, wasn't it? Yeah, last year was Donkey Kong. This year it's Defender. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, then, just a, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I was going to ask. What was I'm just out of curiosity. What was that other thing in the picture that you sent me? Oh, uh, that was um. Oh, I don't know what the hell that was. It wasn't video game related because I looked no, at, yeah. I looked at it like three times over, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It, oh, I'm sorry. Um, it was. It was Minecraft Ender Dragon. Oh, that's cool. All right. Yeah. So that's the other one. I yeah, I didn't I, I didn't know what that was, so I just kept moving. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like oh, okay. So um, so yeah, so that was really cool. And then um, <clears throat> moving on to the actual booths. So yes, um, I thought the uh, the Capcom booth was really cool. They were showcasing a lot of stuff. Um, I'm trying to remember in order what the hell I saw because well, that's what you live streamed. I think from Capcom. Yeah, no, I live stream. I live streamed from Capcom. I'm trying to remember which game. Like I'll mix up which games went where. Oh, know? I gotcha. Yeah. So, so to, forgive me as I flip through my phone to find all this stuff. Um, the Mortal Kombat cosplay was pretty cool that I saw. Yeah. That um, was pretty cool. Yeah. I, oh, did I not take a picture of Capcom? I probably didn't take a picture of Capcom. I'm trying to remember if they were the ones that were doing uh, the Medan game. Oh, oh, uh, Man of Medan or something? Man no, of, uh, yeah. Which I'm looking yeah. forward to. It's the same company that created um, 
Oh gosh, the other the the game with Hayden Panettiere. Um, what is that horror game? Okay, I was just talking about it with somebody earlier today too. Um, on PlayStation Four. So I'm sorry, and, I'm getting I'm oh, getting everything mixed up. No, it's all right, all right. Man and Dan, here we go. Yeah. Uh, and Dan is coming out from somebody. Uh, do, 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 Until Dawn, is that what you were talking about? Until, Until Dawn, Dawn, that's what I was yeah. talking about. Yeah, so from the creators of Until Dawn, they had the next game, which is called Man of Medan. It looks really, really awesome. If you haven't played, uh, if you haven't played PlayStation 4 um, and you haven't played Until Dawn, I highly recommend it. It's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. It's one of those butterfly effect things where the choices you make affect actually the game and as it plays out. And that's the same as this one, where it's like a two-player co-op, but yeah. you don't necessarily play together. You're just playing at the same time. Right. And people so, can die at any moment. Exactly, which is part of the fun. Yeah. So, so um, oh, and Capcom was also, I think Capcom was the one that was showing off uh, Monster Hunter. Oh, yeah, Iceborne. Right? What? Iceborne? Iceborne? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, no, no. exactly. Like, the, yeah. well, they had a whole, dis whatever it was, they had a whole display out there. Mm -hmm. Um. And they even had a uh, they had uh, they had somebody dressed up to take pictures with, which was really cool. Oh, uh, yeah, really, so. really buff woman. Uh, she was, yeah, she, <laughs> she was, kinda, she was, and she was kind of scary. I did not, I did not take a picture with her. Um, so that was so, and so that was Capcom. Right next to them was Blizzard. They had a huge TV screen on top, and they were showcasing um, Overwatch. Yes, which is their big game. Yep. Uh, so that was really cool. Right next to them, we had uh, Bandai Namco. Um, and uh, I'm trying to remember the stuff that they were showing. It's, it's Well, Bandai just... Namco is Man of Medan. Oh, okay. Bandai yeah. Namco is Man of Medan. My confusion. So Bandai Namco had Man of Medan. Capcom had um, uh, Monster Hunter. And they also had a, couple of, they had a couple of cabinets where you could play Resident Evil 5 and 6 as well. The re-releases. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, the re-releases, which was really cool. Um, and then there was, for Nintendo Switch... They had a whole um, they had a whole section set up there to play Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Ah, oh, game is fantastic. Yeah, so um, so if you did not if you didn't order it yet, I mean it came out on Friday while I was at the con, but <laughs> it gave everybody an opportunity to play it, and the line for that was super long. People were just dying <laughs> to play this thing, so um, so that was really cool. And then uh, moving down the line, I'm trying to think because like a lot of the video game stuff was kind of in one section. Okay. And then, but then there were a couple others that were like really like, that were far away. So Square Enix was like really far down the line, but they had a really impressive booth, and their major showcase was Final Fantasy VII. The oh, the re remake. Okay. So, so they were obviously they were they were um, they were showing it off, and then um, you were able to take a photo op on Cloud's motorcycle. Oh, really? <laughs> really cool. <laughs> Um, they were show they showcased maquettes and stuff like that, which was really nice. Okay, I'm sorry. Is a maquette a, a industry word? Uh, no, they're called maquettes. Well, I've never heard this term before. Maquettes. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to come to life. It's a tiny, do, tiny do a, do world. A, do, a, do a Google. I search am. For I'm doing it right now. Do a Google search for maquettes. So anyway, <laughs> so Square Enix was showing off Final Fantasy, which was really cool. I um, it. They had uh, M A Q U E T T E. I, oh wow! Actually, you know what? I guess that that was correct. Yeah. So for the remake, they've got maquettes of every main character. Oh, okay. A sculptor's small preliminary model or sketch. So it's a prototype. Whatever maquette. Um, <laughs> and then, like I said, they were showing uh, they were showing um, those things off. Uh, they had fig they also had figures. Um, they were showing final. They had some Final Fantasy figures, oh, uh, nice. like regular like um, store action figures. Okay. Uh, they also had some stuff for um, Kingdom Hearts. Oh. Uh, nice. And for Dragon Quest. So. Okay. So they had a bunch of stuff there, which was really cool. Um, and I really enjoyed. Like I thought the Square Enix booth was like really put together well. Um, it was very impressive. I'm, I'm trying to remember the game that you were able to play while you were there because everybody had a game that you can try out, which was really <laughs> cool. Um, did you try any games? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. Uh, I was. I did, I'm not kidding you. The lines for them. Oh, I believe it. I it believe it. it. Totally yeah. believe it. Yeah, it really wasn't worth it. Uh, it was like and being then, at the Nintendo Power Fest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then, uh, last but not least, in terms of the booth stuff, um, I managed to find Arcade One Up. Oh, nice. I managed to find an arcade one up, and I got to see the Star Wars arcade. Oh, oh that must look good. Ridiculously impressive, and they have a riser to match it. 
Yes, I saw that. They, they have they a matching did. riser with it. So I watched, there was some guy on it who wasn't getting off of it. So I just watched for a little <laughs> bit. Um, and they weren't busy. They weren't busy. He was like literally the only guy there, but he just wouldn't stop playing. So I'm like, fine. <laughs> what I, I took some video of him and I'm like, okay, I'm happy. The end. Oh. Um, so that so that was really cool. And that was uh, that was the majority of what I saw. There were a few other things here and there that I saw. Um, one of them was uh, busts of, and I don't know if this was Sideshow Collectibles or not, but they had busts of Scorpion and Sub-Zero, which looked really cool. Ooh, cool. Very impressive. Cool. Oh, and then over at Hot Wheels, something I did not know oh, about. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, so I actually Hot, heard about this recently. Yeah. yeah, so Hot Wheels is releasing a Mario Kart racing set. That's you cool. know, it's the one with the racing races on the track. But yep. when I watch the kids playing with them, it's so cool because it's like they press a button and the car just like flies through the whole thing. It's like, it like and you an can RC? Just... what? Like, well, like an old RC? No, not an RC oh. at all. It's like just a regular car that gets oh, no, not propelled. The... Oh, okay. I, I meant like the ones that are on the track. You know no, what I mean? No, yeah. no, no. It get... no, no, no. This is one. No, no, no. It's the regular track yeah. that it gets propelled. I gotcha. I gotcha. Track. And it looked really, really cool, really fun, very smart for uh, uh, for Hot Wheels to do that. Also, something really interesting that Nintendo did for a promotional thing mm -hmm. uh, at the event. Um, Nintendo, I guess, signed a, a partnership with Southwest Airlines. Oh, yes, yes. Son and, of a gun. Yeah, and so as part of the promotion on Wednesday, there was a flight from Dallas to San Diego. Oh, that's where it was. Okay. Yeah. It was from Dallas to San Diego, Southwest airline flight. They gave everybody on that flight, a Nintendo switch and a copy of super Mario maker two for free. Oh man. You get a switch and you get a switch. Oprah comes out. Yeah. She's everybody. Everybody gets a switch. That's cool. Yeah. Which was really cool and awesome of Nintendo. And go ahead. And that also explains how Southwest airlines has, an official they made an official level on super mario maker 2 so that yeah. explains that part exactly and then um that was pretty much everything i saw on the floor and then right. to finish it off on the video game part um we uh a friend of mine who will remain nameless um <laughs> well, uh, who was working at the con for his company mm-hmm managed to get me into the Nintendo Lounge. Oh, now, the so Nintendo... in other words, snuck you in. No, he got me in. It's okay. <laughs> uh, because the line was already closed for the day, but I wasn't, planning on, I wasn't planning on going. But he's like, hey, come by. You can check out the lounge, and then we'll go to dinner. So we did that, okay. thing, which was really cool. Very cool. So we went to the so I went into the Nintendo Lounge. Super fun stuff going on in there. So And they were showcasing a lot of the upcoming games. Okay. Okay. So that was different from where the Marvel Ultimate Alliance thing was. Yeah, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance thing was actually on the convention floor. Oh, I got you. The, okay. the, okay. the Nintendo Lounge was in the Marriott next door. Oh. Also, also next door, they had a pinball lounge, which I did not make it to. Oh. And it was free to play on top of that. Ooh, even better. Which was cool. So anyway, go into the Nintendo Lounge. Super like super large floor. Very colorful. Very fun. Um, they had all they had all kinds of photo ops going on for the games that they were promoting, and the games that they were promoting were Pokemon Sword and Shield. And for all of these games, they had they must have had twenty stations set up for you to play. Oh wow! Yeah, so there was plenty of opportunity to play, and they were staggering people in, so it was never it wasn't crowded, which was okay. Nice. You got the opportunity to just walk around. So there were a bunch of people playing Pokemon Sword and Shield. There was a photo op for it as well, which was <laughs> nice. Uh, they were also showcasing Marvel Ultimate Alliance in there as well, so people okay. were playing that. Uh, Frankie played it for a little while there. And was oh, very he? Happy. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was very happy. Does he have uh, a Switch? Uh, no, he doesn't have a Switch, but oh, okay. he, want, he may want to buy one now that he played Ultimate Alliance Three. <laughs> um, and then after Ultimate Alliance, he did, um, uh, or they they had Link's Awakening, the new Link's Awakening. That's what I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, that looked beautiful. Again. Does it? Could not play it, just watched people playing it, and it was fantastic. Oh, oh man. Absolutely Can't fantastic. Wait. Um, and then uh, after that, I saw there were two other games, I believe. Well, oh, Super Mario Maker 2. Okay. They had that there, so people were playing that. But then they were also playing Luigi's Mansion 3, Ooh. which at the con they announced it will be dropping on Halloween this year. Ah, that's awesome. Which is perfect. <laughs> but they had Luigi's, uh, Luigi Mansion, Luigi's Mansion 3 playing, and they also had a nice Luigi photo op that you can do so that was really fun as well <laughs> was it luigi or gooigi uh it was luigi and gooigi oh there you go Twofer. 
Yes, um, Madden 2 first. So, um, so, so the Nintendo did a great job with the lounge. And when you go into the Nintendo lounge, you get a couple of little goodies along the oh, way. Oh, really? So, yeah. Oh, so even, um, you got, even you were able to get these goodies. Yeah, exactly. So I got these Pokemon Sword and Shield pins of the three new Pokemon that were oh, announced. That's cool. Oh, the starter Pokemons. Okay. Yeah. So those are the new Pokemon, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got a lovely little Marvel Ultimate Alliance keychain. Go oh, back it up a little bit. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Which is basically, the, I think it's the cover art. Yeah. Um, I got a really cool Luigi's Mansion flashlight. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> wait, wait, let me see the logo again. Uh, Luigi's Mansion is. is. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then that's he's on awesome. the other side. Oh, see that? Okay, see that's and cool. And it's super bright, too. Oh, yeah, the damn LEDs. Yep, and last but not least, my favorite one. Um, I got a Link Link from Link's Awakening keychain. Oh, that's, that's adorable. Yes. I mean, and he is I, adorable in the game. I so, don't know. If I, that, that, that's going to bug me till the day. I mean, I'm getting the game. Don't get me wrong, but that art style is going to bug me. No, you'll get used to it, trust me. Right. It's the same, you know what? People said that about Wind Waker, and it all true. worked out. True, so, true. Yeah. So all in all, um, San Diego Comic-Con was a complete success. I had a really great time. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, uh, think, uh, everything went well. Will I go next year? I don't know. The crowd's got to me. <laughs> the crowd's got to me. You did. May I, you texted me and you're like, this is hell. <laughs> yes. I literally said, this is hell. I can't deal with this anymore. Kill me. <laughs> just... And that was probably an hour in <laughs> on day one. I don't remember you being that bad in New York, but uh, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, well, I'm older. My patience. Is <laughs> um, so let me ask you this: uh, just we don't have to go deep into it because there's a bunch of other podcasts. I'm sure victims and villains will do it. Yeah. But again, being a uh, fan of comic books, a fan of movies, your thoughts on Marvel's Phase Four announcement? Um, I like some of it. I'm not sure Uh-oh. about, I'm, and I'm not sure about some of it only because. Um, it looks like they're oversaturating the market in 2021. I think there's like seven things coming out. It's like three films or four, three films and four TV shows. And I'm like, that's kind of a lot to take in. Um, okay. I'm also curious about a couple of the choices they made. But in general, it's a, to me, it's a solid lineup. I like that they're being a little bolder now because they've got their audiences to buy into the fact that they know how to make quality films yeah. with these characters or you know in my opinion quality films so so i'm actually really hopeful because we're gonna see things that we that honestly i never thought we would see true um and you know it's big time you know and a lot of the tv shows are going to be on the disney plus which i yeah. think should just rename marvel plus at this point true. um and they get a lot of the car- a lot of the actors to come back to play those in television shows i think that's why you see a lot of saturation in 2021 you got to have a few television shows on there to yeah, you know absolutely. what i mean to but Um, you know, your thoughts uh, real quick, because again, I'm being the casual person, meaning I don't know the comics too well. I get Thor four and it looks like Jane Foster is taking over a store, which is fine. Um, and you know, normally someone who's like such a stickler for the original, everyone's like, Oh, Jane's getting the hammer. I'm like, guess what? How long was Thor a frog? So, you know, so that's going to be fine. And apparently there's a difference between Thor and the mighty Thor. But I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you got that. Uh, you got Black Widow finally getting her movie. Um, Blade is that a TV show or a movie? They really didn't. No, announce. Blade is going to be a movie. And okay. I was gonna, actually very excited when they um, when they announced uh, Mahershala Ali to yeah, play him. Was all fa- a- oh my god, he is such an amazing actor. Is it? I mean, <laughs> poor Wesley Snipes. But um, I guess it's just they want to see Blade back. You know, in the realm of the of the Marvel universe. Yes. Um, they also announced f- uh, f- uh, Fantastic Four. Um, no, which they didn't announce the Fantastic Four. No, 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 no. What they did was afterwards. Uh, it they, wasn't yeah. on the graphics. They said, yes, they said they have plans for. Well, that's what I meant. Fantastic yeah. Four. Uh, you know, the mutants. They said they didn't say yep. X Men. They said the mutants. Yep. Um, and then of course the movies they didn't mention, which were like Guardians, the Galaxy Three, uh, Black they Panther they- Two. They yeah, just they, said, they talked them. about them. They, they mentioned, mentioned them. them. Yeah. So, um, uh, what I was going to ask was again because I felt this way with Iron Man all the way back eleven years ago. I'm like, why are they making a movie about Iron Man? I'm asking you for my own sake. What What is the um, the 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 and the Ten Rings? 
Chung something and the Ten Rings. Oh, Shang Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Oh, okay. So I've been, yeah. mis- I've been so, mispronouncing it. So Shang Chi was a was a, a comic book that came out in the seventies. It wasn't a very long run, mm-hmm. um, but I think what they're doing with that is they're bringing it they're, again. I think that I think they're bringing they want to bring an Asian character into the Marvel That's universe. Cool. And you know what? And I'm all for it because I think it's interesting that they can now pull a little bit more obscure characters. And I and I think it's a smart play because they just, you know, because Iron Fist was just on Netflix. You don't want to do that one. Mm-hmm. I think this guy is going to be perfect for it. And not only that, they're going to introduce the Mandarin into the Marvel Universe the correct way. Better be a better man. Oh, that made me so and, mad. No, no, no. <laughs> and he will, be, he will be the correct Mandarin. All so, right, good. Uh, yeah, so I'm finally- looking forward to that. Do you think they haven't announced anything like an Avengers type movie for Phase Four? But do you think eventually it's going to lead again to some sort of team up? You know, I don't know because I have a feeling. Well, I think there's going to be a team up. I don't know if they're going to well, call it. I don't know if they're going to call it Avengers or not because I have a feeling. My theory is that they're heading towards the Secret Invasion storyline from the comic books, and I'm just wondering if it's just going to be a movie called Secret Invasion, and then we get well, they, a. They're doing Eternals, three. isn't Eternals kind of a team up? Well, Eternal no, Eternals is a is a um, is a, a race. It's a race of people. Oh, <laughs> I'm thinking wacky races. Okay. No, not wacky races. They're not all running somewhere. <laughs> okay. The Eternals are a race. They're they're a race of people. So oh, yeah, okay. it's okay. it's a group, but it doesn't include gotcha. it doesn't include everybody else per se. Well, it it's it looks awesome. Uh, that was announced. Jane Silent Bob reboots announced, which I'm very excited for. That looks very cool. Um, white man. Yes, and. Uh, uh, what's your play? Uh, uh, Melissa Benoit plays uh, Chronic because yeah. in boots nowadays they always have the the, the gender swap. So that's Why just not? and that just leads into what looks like a very funny movie. I think it's um, so. Overall, what would you say this year's San Diego? How would you rate this year's San Diego Comic Con? I would probably, you know, I, I me personally, I would give it an eight out of ten. I take the two points off because they've got. I think they've got to cut back on how many people go. <laughs> I really do, and they gotta get they gotta get a little more organized. As I told Frankie when I was there, because I was getting very mad, and he's like, "Dude, he's like, don't get upset." And I'm like, uh, and I told him, I said, "You don't understand." I said, "Organization is what I do for a living at my job." I was like, "So when I see other people doing a bad job at it, it upsets me, because I know what it takes to." What like, are you talking about, man? To, Just go get your comic books, okay? It takes a lot of work. To, I know it takes a lot of work to do it, um, but still, like, I really like. I, I and again. For 170,000 people, they kept it as orderly as they can. Could have been a little better. Um, but overall, in terms of the content, the content was outstanding. Fair really, enough. Every, everything was covered end to end. Uh, every nerd should have left happy. <laughs> I'm sure they did. And uh, with that, we're going to wrap up this special edition. Uh, very awesome that we finally got a first-hand accounting of San Diego Comic-Con. So glad you somewhat enjoyed it. Thank you, and sir. Uh, next week we will be back to regular programming. Uh, I guess until maybe till I hit New York Comic Con, we'll yeah. see that. Uh, also, remember if you're in the Tri State area, if you're along, if you're on Long Island, August 10th and 11th, the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo, which will have nowhere near as many people as yeah. San Diego Comic Con, but it still may be a little crowded. Uh, but we'll have a table there. We're going to be podcasting. We're going to try and live stream if. The uh, stream will hold, and uh, we're going to have television there, games to be able to play. It's going to be a good time. Check it out. Get your tickets early because they're a little cheaper than at the door, and tell them the Retro Gamers sent you. It's not going to help you with the price. It just gets our name out there. Yeah. And uh, with that, Ant, I'm glad that you survived San Diego. I said, thank you very much. I'm happy I survived it. I'm happy I survived this episode. I talked too much. <laughs> and with that, folks, we will catch you right here next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast. Thank you.